Hey guys, welcome back to Photo Beast, the channel where we talk about all things photography, trying to become better photographers in the end. Today I wanted to talk about a specific product, as you probably saw in the description, the R6 Mark II. Which, by the way, I wasn't looking to get a copy, it just kind of fell into my lap. I'll get to that in a minute. So, I am an R5 shooter. I started my first mirrorless camera was, I went from DSLRs to mirrorless with the Canon M50. I had a little adapter, I went from that to the R, really didn't like it. And when I got the R5, I fell in love. I am a hybrid shooter, I do video as well. I shoot commercials all the time, just to give you a little backstory about me. For a profession, I do a lot of videos, video work, and weddings. Um, I also shoot bands, band videos. I like my passion is wildlife. I have won a few awards doing wildlife photography, and I love it. I love getting up at four o'clock in the morning, driving hours to a location, sitting on hard rocks in the rain, freezing my ass off all day to try to get an eagle swooping in and getting a fish. I mean, it's just a highlight of my week. To do stuff like that, I love being outside and I'm blessed as to where I live. My yard is surrounded by about 1,200 acres of tree farms, which includes and incorporates deers into my yard. Threw some deer corn out and that brought the turkeys over. And then I also have hawks. I have eagles that fly over my house from time to time because of the reservoir up the street. And then there's two ponds across the street, which brings egrets and ospreys. So just in a little five mile zone around my house, there's tons of wildlife and I'm blessed for that. There's not so much as many eagles as there used to be so I have to travel for them because they're in specific locations between one to two hours away and that's fine. But the R5 has went with me on every one of these little expeditions across North and South Carolina to capture the wildlife here. I absolutely love this camera. When it first came out, I don't know if you guys, or a lot of you guys will remember this, but this camera was beat to hell by reviewers. AK video overheating, ah, I'm not buying one. You should have seen the hate that this camera had. And I said, I don't care, I'm getting one because it's 45 megapixels and it seems like it's a great solid photographer's camera. And I bought it with the intentions of photography and fell in love with it. This to me is the epitome of what a camera should be. And I love Canon for what they've done with the updates and upgrades. I wish that they would implement more stuff, but that's a whole nother video. Now, how did I get from an R5 to the R6 Mark II, you might ask? Well, I actually have had a lot of accidents with this camera and one of them was breaking off the CF Express card door and in the process of trying to find somebody to pick in the process of trying to find somebody to fix it I was given quotes from anywhere from 800 to $1100 from the very few people that wanted to do it so I ordered that part myself it was going to take about 46 weeks to get here so I bought the R7 to hold me over the R7 you know, out of the box. I love my customizations on my R5. Anybody that has one and has, loves to customize, you can really get deep into the camera. I like one button for AI, um, our back button autofocus, the next one is eye autofocus, the next one changed my focal points, and then I cap off my ISO at 12,800. The reason why is anything over 12.8 with the R5, I find that I have a hard time cleaning it up. And if I'm shooting at ISO 25,000, I feel like I shouldn't even be taking that shot. When I got the R7, I decided I was gonna put it through its paces and a friend of mine asked me to come shoot um, some images of his band, a little light video and stuff. I went up there and this place was dark. There was no house lights on the band. It was just like random lights all over the place. They're just starting out, this particular band. So they didn't have a lot of lighting. There was no techno, I mean, uh, no pyrotechnics, I said techno. You get the point. But the R7 went with me that night. Like I said, the R5 was out of commission and I did take some um, ISO 25,600 shots. They were unusable. I mean, these images were so bad that when I put them in Topaz or Lightroom to clean up, it was just horrendous. I mean, they were bad. I gave a few of the images to the band, but said, I don't want my name associated with them. <laughs> but they were happy just to get something. You know, they're a brand new band, they're starting out, and they get a little bit of attention and some love with a pro camera. 
you know, so be it. And uh, since then, I've redeemed myself with one of, you know, my friends in that band. But uh, yeah, the R7, it just doesn't doesn't get it, get it for me. And then I tried using this camera for wildlife and Dwayne Patton, who's uh, I've got to be a pretty big YouTuber so far in the photography industry. He's got in touch with Canon and found out there is some uh, focusing flaws with this camera and I've experienced it dozens of times to say the least. What will happen is you get your focal point on the subject and you're locked on the subject and as you're taking pictures some of them are in focus it goes out of focus and then it comes back that is unacceptable it really is because i took this camera with me on a few important shoots for me not for clients but for wildlife you know and i had to do some traveling to get there and why this thing was out of commission this thing failed me so many times and then it also doesn't have the in-body stabilization now let me say this, a lot of you guys are out there probably going, no, the R7 is a great camera. If you come from something like the 90D to the R7, hell yeah, it's a great camera. But if you come from the R5, then you see its flaws. So let me just clarify that. Now, as an R5 shooter, I compare every camera to my beloved R5 now. So if I grab an R7 and I tell you it's, you know, it's crap, because I'm comparing it to an R5. But like I said, compared to a 90D, that's better. 7D Mark II, that's better. It's significantly better. The sensor's newer. The autofocus on the R7 is amazing. It does have focusing issues that we all hope and pray will be gone by the R7 Mark II. In the meantime, I have a wife that got into photography last year, and I have been trying to teach her everything I know as fast as I can. She loves doing portraits and wildlife. She still has a long way to go, just like any photographer. But she has an artistic side, and she's very good at the images that she takes. She asked me to get her the R8. Um, I bought her an RP, thinking she's only going to do a few portraits, and then she started following me through the woods, getting muddy and stuff. You know, who doesn't want to have their wife with them, your best friend, your partner in life, taking images with you? I mean, how cool is that? So we got her the R8. I did some research and I found out the R6 Mark II had some really interesting features. And because she was still new to photography, and at the time I was also buying, a, a changing out EF lenses for RF glass, my money was tied up, you know. The camera world is expensive, let's be serious here. The um, R8 has been a great camera for her. And I've edited some of her pictures and she claims they're not as sharp as my R5 pictures and she's right, the R8 is not as sharp as the R5. But the sensor on here is supposed to be the same as the R6 Mark II. If you're looking for a camera between the R6 Mark II and the R8, and you don't know which one to get, you know, whatever one fits your budget, just get that one. You know, it's the glass that you're going to keep for years and years to come. You know, you can still obtain great images. She does weddings and wildlife with this, and her images are amazing. As a matter of fact, let me just pull. This is a portrait that she did. She actually printed it out. And this is from the Canon R8. Beautiful portrait, it's a prom picture. And then, you know, she's got her wildlife pictures and her eagles and stuff. But this is just to show you that it takes amazing images. So over the course of the last few weeks, my daughter brought home COVID. My wife and daughter needed help. And being the loving husband I am, I was taking care of them. I ended up getting that new strain and I was down for about three weeks. That's why I haven't posted a video and I do apologize to you guys that just subscribed to me and I vanished for three weeks. It's because I got a respiratory infection and I was in and out of the hospital, antibiotics, the works, breathe, um, it's been bad. But thank you for your thoughts and prayers and the people that wrote me. Thank you guys so much. Well, about a week and a half ago, I was up and about, I'm still not feeling good at this point, and these people backed out of a wedding. Uh, photographers did, and I went and shot the wedding, and afterwards I went to talk to a friend of mine who has an Amazon resale store that I did video work for on the ride home, and he got in touch with me and says, hey, I got the R6 Mark II. Are you interested? Now this thing's brand new in the box, everything else. He said, we tested it, it works. Bring a lens, you know, bring your lens up in the end of the store and try it out. So I went up there, took my lens in the store, tried it out immediately. It took great images. It has a great autofocus, which I feel like is 
I'm not going to say superior for your average person that's new to photography. I'd say that the R6 Mark II and the R8 would have a superior um, autofocus compared to something like the R5, but I like to go in and customize my stuff. Now, if I'm shooting birds in flight, I have my nine points or the wide open um, autofocus field and I'll lock on the subject and I'll get my birds in flight. But a lot of times, and I mean a lot of times, I'm shooting a subject like a bird in a tree with branches in front of it. So that's when I need to have two different autofocus and techniques going at the same time. So what I do is I have my single point that I set up and lock on the bird and that gets me on the bird. Once I'm on the bird, I'll hit the button next to that, which I have for eye autofocus. And then I hold that button down and then it follows the bird's eyeball, which thus from there I can take my shots. And then if I need to go to a bigger autofocus point or back to the small one, I got the button next to that one to change autofocus points. So these three buttons are very important. I also shoot manual, low aperture, and auto ISO capped off at 12,800. That's my setup, that's my go-to, and that's what I run and gun with. You know, I like to focus on composition, not what ISO it at. Am I on the right ISO? You know, I let the camera do the work when it comes to ISO, and if there is a high noise level, I can always take my wheel, and I set my wheel for exposure compensation. So if the scene's too bright because my ISO's too high, I just roll down my exposure compensation. If it's too dark, I go the other way, it's that simple. So my setup is tried and true and I love it. All I have to do is think fast, slow, is it fast moving, is it slow moving, and move my shutter, and then is it bright or is it dark, and I can move my exposure compensation wheel. So I've got two fingers on two different wheels, and then I've got my three different triggers on the back, I'm ready to roll. Focus it on composition. So having a setup like that for me to do wildlife is very important. It is key and it's instrumental to me personally. So when I was given the R6 Mark II, of course it has an updated autofocusing system, but so does the R7. And I found the R7's autofocusing system to be shit, to say the least, excuse my language. For those of you that did defend this camera, the autofocus on this, it will lock on, but it goes out and it is not consistent. Like I said, it is not consistent at all. So to have the R7 as my R5's backup, I've kind of not been 100% happy with it. So when I got the deal on the R6 Mark II, I couldn't turn it down because I got it $1,000 under retail. I can't say no to that. Worst case scenario, I hate the camera, I sell it, make a few hundred bucks. So what? So I get the camera and the first thing I do is um, I take a few shots in the store, but I come home and I want to show you something. So as you guys can see from the little image here in blue. So as you guys can see right here, this was actually cleaned up, but I'm gonna to go to the left and I'm gonna pull up the original image. This image is 25,600 ISO. I have never had an image. Now this is blowing up to 200%, okay? You can see there's definitely noise in the picture. Is there noise? Yeah, but is it a good picture? Yeah. This was probably, I wish it told me the time because it was late in the day and we get dark at six o'clock now because you know this is at the end of February here, February 26th. We got the noise, we got a little bit of light coming in from the window right there. It's late in the day. You know even at shutter speed 1 25th of a second, lowest aperture 7.1. For me to be at ISO 25,000, it's dark in that room. And it was very dark to say the least. But this picture, if I go to develop, you can see I haven't done any corrections yet. There are no corrections done. This is straight out of camera. Look how beautiful the color rendition. Look at the detail. Now, I'm gonna just go ahead and hit enhance. And by the way, guys, I'm shooting this today on the DJI Pocket 3. I love this little camera. Look at that. That is freaking amazing. It's just all color noise. You get rid of that little bit of digital color noise, you're good to go. And I'm not even changing anything else. And here we go. There's the edited image. Look at the clarity in the eye. And I'm gonna show you it once again. This is not a trick. None of the sliders have been moved. This is straight out of camera, raw image. You got great color, great contrast. It's just vibrant enough. Look at this. And as somebody that does wildlife and that takes it as serious as I do, I feel like that this is not only a great wedding and live event music. <laughs> My dog snore. 
Blue, we're making a video on you. Give us a break here. But I feel like this is also a great wildlife camera. It really is. Let's hit auto and just see. Whoa. Sometimes you can hit auto and just bring down the exposure and you get a little bit of edit. But for the most part, I have to say, this is an amazing image. He's just sitting on a bed, but this is probably in my lifetime, the first picture at 25,000 ISO that I was impressed. You know, the image itself, like I said, these are not images to write home about. This is just real life. I'm taking images around the house and you can see the details. And I will enhance one more just really quick, just to show you that I'm not kidding, 25,000 ISO. And creating the DNG, I have a pretty fast computer, so this shouldn't take long. Sometimes one of these things will get hung up and it just gets to be a little ridiculous. Oh my goodness, here we go. It's finally starting to move. I don't know, Lightroom gets hung up sometimes, but here we go. And as you can see, the hair, the details there, the eyes have that little bit of clarity. And if you look at my basic panel, I have not adjusted anything in the basics at all. This is all straight out of camera. And I'm bumped up to 200%. Here's 100, which is the... Now, I personally like that first image better. Now, one of the things also that I want to explain about high ISO. If you have... One of the things that I've experienced with ISO over the years, and especially high ISO, and this is one of the reasons I'm not scared to shoot 12,600 ISO, is because if you have good lighting and your ISO is high, you can clean up that image. Now, if there's no light source coming in and your ISO is that high, it's not going to be the easiest to clean up. So just try to keep that in mind. That's the best little tip that I can give you. Now, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. The R6 Mark II, whether it's on the RF lens on I've shot it on the 500 F4, and it actually brought a new life to that old lens like never before. This camera on the 500 millimeter F4, the EF1, I don't have RF money for every piece of glass, unfortunately. Now, I would, if you guys could do me a favor back and get down there and hit that subscribe button. Come on, I need some subscribers. You guys gotta stick around, we are family now. I am your family, you are mine. Hit subscribe. What's the worst that can happen? I pop up in your box every once in a while and give you some good information. Hey, I'm your friend now, I'm your family. So, and also hit that like button. Me in blue would like to share more videos with you, so. Anyways guys, the R6 Mark II is an amazing camera. I was holding off for the R5 Mark II, which I still have in my sights, but I absolutely love this camera and I will be probably selling my R7 now. I will be selling my R7 now. Well, I love you guys. I'll see y'all in the next one and take care. I said, I need dog treats and my daddy needs to subscribers. Please like, share, subscribe so I can get my treats. Thank you.